I'm Thomas Mai. And I'm Zancy Weber. The Craving Creativity Podcast is our cry for help. A way to help ourselves as creatives to talk about how we get inspired, how we create, but also how we deal with stress, mental illness, and everything in between. Now, if you're creative, you, like us, have most likely always been seen as the black sheep of your family and always making different choices than what 90% of normal people might do. Uh, not going for the safe choice, but always living a little on the edge. With the Craving Creativity Podcast, it is our hope to create a safe space where we can talk about being creative. We want to build a community of like-minded creators and help each other. Subscribe, email us, and be part of the creative journey. Welcome to Craving Creativity. I am one of your hosts, Ainsley Weber, here with my wonderful co-host, Thomas Mike. And we're here to talk about creativity and how to live a creative life somehow. And a happy life. And a happy happy life. Creative and happy. Aren't they the same thing, Thomas? Oh, yes. The more creative you are, the more happy you are, obviously. But the downside is, of course, if you're creative, you might not make enough money to have a life. So that's the balance we're trying to deal with in this podcast. How do we we remain creative? How do we remain sane? No pun intended. And uh, how do we have a fulfilled life? So I guess this episode is not about making money. It's almost about the opposite. It's about using creativity as a way to escape yes. from stress, your regular life. Correct. And yeah, how creativity can be used in that way. So this, you suggested this one. Yes. Uh, so so what brought this one about? What, what was on top of your head here? It is, we talked about before, I often get stressed. And when I do get stressed, I seem to escape sometimes. And thank God it's not through alcohol or through <laughs> other vices, I just tend to either open a new page or do stuff creative to start a new project, get excited about new projects. So yeah, I escape, yeah. I use creativity as an escapism where I, that fuels a hope. And for me, hope is very important. Hope is the most important. If one of the most important emotions to have is have hope or feeling. And I think hope is, is, is very, very important. And so by, escaping into something else and then become creative, I provide hope for myself again. Oh, it's yeah. not that bad. We can do this. We can do that. This will happen. That will happen. So that's how I sort of use it. Creativity as escapism. Does that make sense? So it's it's kind of like a mood lift for you in in the sense that. <sighs> yeah, but it, I can also do it if I'm very happy. So <laughs> it, I don't have to be down or stressed. Right, it can, yeah. which I'm coming with some examples of here. It can be in different moods, but it is definitely a place to go to, a safe space, so to speak. Does that make right. Sense? No, yeah. I, I totally understand yeah. that. For me, for me, using creativity as an escapism is usually when I'm frustrated doing something that I don't think is creative or I don't, I'm not feeling creative with, yeah. and I rebel by doing something else creative. <laughs> um, so, yeah. like, if I'm if I'm frustrated with my my work, I'll, I'll do I'll go home and do something creative or yeah. if I'm frustrated with a creative project, I'll put it aside and do something, a different creative project. Yeah. I think that is um, the way that I escape into it and something it, because your creativity automatically gives you more control over it as well. Yeah. So I think that is how I escape into creativity is like if I'm feeling constrained or uh, frustrated with a project or, or stuck, stuck. Yeah. yeah. I will, go in the exact opposite direction and it's and it's a creative project that yeah. has no timeline, has no deadline, is is just create creativity for the sake of creativity. Um and that kind of resets my uh <laughs> my mood level and my creativity <laughs> level. Okay. Um so that I can go back to the other project and, and get through. Okay. Yeah. That makes that makes sense. I like that. So but if you start all these different creative projects to then feel fulfilled or if you have all these half completed 25 percent completed projects around wow wow way to really just attack me there uh <laughs> I, I i actually have a folder in my archive uh, in my in my storage um of unfinished projects and look I don't stress about it too much um, because if, 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 if a project that isn't, that is there just to be an outlet for me starts not returning that, that good feeling anymore, yeah. I will put it aside. And, and if I ever get the urge to go back to it, I'll go back to it. Yeah. Um, what, 
I find keeping those on file is great for is for inspiration to remind myself of things that have inspired me in the past or things that I have worked on in the past that might inspire when I'm like, when I'm feeling that way again, I'm like, oh, what, ha- what do I do in this situation? And I go back and, and that kind of rekindles that mm. nostalgia for the creation. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes these projects turn into ongoing things that like, that's the thing that it turned into a podcast network. One of my, one of my creative, creative escapes. So sometimes they turn into ongoing and rewarding things in and of themselves. But I try not to put that much pressure Mm. on them because again, I think that's usually what I'm escaping from Mm. with creativity is pressure to perform creatively or just pressure to perform or frustration with inability to uh, find that creative, uh, that creative output somewhere else. But you have to be down to do this. Not, not down, just like I need, there needs to be some reason for me to escape. Okay. Um, And usually that I usually find that is, is frustration is like either there's something standing in the way of me being creative or there's some, some, the deadlines are ridiculous or the client, my client is being ridiculous. And like what they're asking me to do is just bad. Yeah. (laughs) And it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to do something for me. Yeah. I'm going to do something creative that I like and move on into this other direction. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing, like my, my creative output over the years has been fairly constant, but it hasn't always been productive. Like uh-huh. I haven't always had something that I can sell or no. something that I can, it is it, part of the process is the creative process. Yeah. And that's a, that's a muscle that I also exercise usually through escapism. Exactly. Yeah. And so when you measure your product, productivity you use the word productivity right yes yeah. so <laughs> you measure that but you're also measuring it measuring it whether it's it's profitable or commercially that is what i mean by productive uh, okay um because there is there is self-care which is sometimes what i use creativity for mm-hmm. um uh, to adjust my mood mm. but there's also i i live through monetizing my creativity yeah that is that's how i make a living so you do have to kind of keep track of like, well, is this a productive use of my time? Yeah. I could, I could just go and spend hours drawing, but I'm not, I'm not a manual artist. So mm. those drawings are not going to be able to be turned into anything monetary or anything profitable. Mm. Um, so you do have to kind of, when you're working for yourself, draw those lines of like, okay, I need, just need to get through this and I can reward myself with ah. creation okay. for the sake of creation. Afterwards, so if I if I finish all these things, I can have a cold beer later on, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. But do you you say manual drawing? Are you drawing on on an iPad or digital way or no uh, pencil and paper? But pencil. that that isn't something that I. It, it's something that I have a natural talent for that yeah. I've never fostered. Okay. Uh, so th- I while I enjoy it, it's very hard to think of that as a productive use of my time. Okay. Yeah. Got it. No, I so what about you? Like how, what are you usually escaping from? Ah, uh, so it can be stress, right? Mm-hmm. So the bills need to be paid. Money's not coming in, you know, things like that, which yeah. seems to be a downer on everything uh, because we got to survive in this modern society. Yeah. Um, that or, you know, uh, yeah, just the grind or barrage of emails. If it's just been a yeah, day with, yeah. you know, lots and lots of emails and you only got through half of them and you feel bad because you haven't got through the other one. So a little bit of escapism right there. That's, that's what I do. Yeah. So what, what is your, what is your go-to creative escape? Um, so. Cause you, you, you treat creativity a little bit differently. To yeah. Me. Like I like to, I like to produce something. Yeah. So I like to have a product at the end of it. Yeah. Whereas your creativity really comes in like problem solving and yes, kind of um, putting so, things together. Uh, so I'm helping you with a campaign right now. Yeah, we talked about yeah. this before, right? So, and I learned that it's not loading very well. Okay, <laughs> it's loading well, but it's not loading fast enough, right? And you know, in this day and age, things are faster, th- something loads, the bigger chances somebody's gonna stay and visit the site. And so I've been using one landing page system and now I wanna go and try and do another landing page system. And it's, I'm gonna do the same, it's gonna look different, but. For me, it's a whole new project. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> I got to start over, and I got to learn a new system. I got to learn. Yeah, I'm sure it's very similar to the one I've just been using, but 
they promise a lot faster loading speed. And loading speed is very important when Absolutely, you're yeah. running some ads and you're trying to get some traffic. So that's something I'm looking forward to. That's an exciting project that has a monetary value for yeah. you and for me. So, But it's also something new that you can wrap your head exactly. around. Exactly. And that is your kind yes, of creation. Yes, yeah. yes, absolutely. absolutely. You know, you're like uh, putting, synergizing information and making yeah. sure you're putting systems together. Exactly. Yeah. But I can also, um, I can also escape into, and it's going to sound a little bit wrong because what's the creative element, but into games, computer games. Okay, yeah. So the games I tend to play are strategy games. And Civilization is a great example. You create something out of nothing, right? You, you have, do not have to tell me. That is one of my <laughs> big escapes as well. So you have a tribe that starts a civilization and then you just go from there, right? Yeah. Or it could be something as funny as, as a Hearthstone, uh, Hearthstone, which is this uh, digital trading card game mm -hmm. where you play against someone else. And you've got 30 cards. You need to put them together in the right need to create a deck and that's creative. And then you need to figure out how to beat someone else. And it's, so I tend to escape also into computer games sometimes. And that yeah. can be when I'm sad, but also when I'm very happy. So I can <laughs> be both. <laughs> it is, computer games sit in a really interesting place for me where yeah. while unlike television and film, they're not entirely consumptive where you are being creative in a computer game. Yes. And computer games do a great job of gamifying oh. that impulse oh, to like absolutely. get the system down and like, okay, yeah. so especially strategy games, because yeah. like if I do it this way, this way, this way, and this way, but then if I switch those around exactly. and it engages your brain it in that does. creative way. And, and it, it teaches you things and skills. Now we can talk about real life applications. <laughs> we can talk about how it comes into, but there are examples of people who have, you know, who've played a lot of uh, World of Warcraft who became leaders of other teams because they yeah. learn skills and the skill leader of these places. I'm not just pointing out some examples here, but one shouldn't game too much, but there's been a fine balance. Like everything in life, there should be a fine balance. Absolutely. And I and, think yeah. like any sort of escape exactly. system, you, yeah. you have to be aware yeah. of when you are doing it yeah. and why you're doing it yeah. rather than like, okay, I really need to do this work, but playing a game would be so much more, exactly. so much more rewarding yeah. for me emotionally right exactly. now. <laughs> I, so for instance, with, with film or TV shows, um, I don't want to watch it alone. Mm. I can. I do it up. Sometimes I'm checking out a long way up right now, which is Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman on motorcycles from Argentina all the way up to LA. Mm -hmm. It's on Apple uh, TV. I like that. I watch it a little bit alone because my wife will not watch that, but I prefer to watch something with her because we can discuss it afterwards. Yeah. Right? Because there's yeah. a meaning to it and we can, there's some creative elements, but just watching it alone. So if that's the case, then I would rather just play some games. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. What is our top three list for this creative escapism? <laughs> so I don't know how you took it. And I, I was the one who came up with the idea and I sent you some stuff and I don't know how you took it, but I think I've changed it myself a little bit myself backwards. So trying to figure out how it is. Um, do you want to go with yours first or should I go with mine first? I was, I, I would like you to start. Okay. So <laughs> we've already talked about it. So it is, when do I escape or when do I use creativity as escapism? Right. right. So yeah. when I'm stressed, so when I'm down, when I'm, I can be very stressed about, as I said, bills or, you know, it's been a rough day at work or maybe the missus and I had a little, had disagreements <laughs> on how things in life should be or something bad happened or, you know, just, I do that where I can, my, I, I, I go in and get into start a new project or start yeah. something new or I go down a rabbit hole on YouTube learning a new skill and like, oh, how can I apply this to everything else I'm doing? So yeah, yeah. I, I, I go in that and I do that. So that's number one is how I get stressed. So that's, so what I interpreted it as yes. is, is times that I have yeah. <laughs> used it as escapism. Yeah. Um, so the first one that I, when I think of times that I've escaped into mm -hmm. creativity was w when I was in university. Yeah. Um, it was a type, big change in my life. Uh, I was living alone, uh, going to university, learning a whole bunch of new stuff that I kind of already knew. So I kind of felt like I was treading water. So I decided to write a book. Um, you do. Because you get to plan out a book, you get to write some characters, yep. you get to, and, and at that time I was also planning on illustrating. So I was, I went into illustrating that oh, wow. all of that came to nothing. Yeah. But 
it was a great way to distract myself from the grind of university yeah. by doing something that was tangentially related because yeah. I was I was doing a multimedia course, so there was lots of uh, digital art and creative writing and that sort of yeah. the, that sort of um, study. So this novel idea that I had, or a series of novels that I idea that I had, was really something that I kind of escaped to yeah. to practice creativity where I was I felt like I was just regurgitating information yeah. at university. I like that. Yeah. So what happened to that novel? It is I've I've re- written 10 chapters and I've got an outline and I've got a lot of illustrations that I kind of still enjoy now. Um if I were going to write it it would be very different. It yeah. was it was very young adult fiction when I was writing it. Now because you were a young adult and now you are not a young <laughs> Yeah, I think it was just the style of writing that I was going for. Yeah. L- less J.R. Tolkien and yeah. more I I guess C. S. Lewis. Okay. Now I would probably go the other way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but that's the well, thing. That's something I probably are, will never do. We are inspired <laughs> by what we read. So yes. um yeah. if you just come off a Chuck uh what's his name? Chuck Palnick's novel, then you write in a certain <laughs> way because he writes a certain way, right? So you are inspired by by what you're reading. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And so again, that was I was escaping from uh this very prescriptive kind of creativity that I encountered at university. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Good. My second one, as again, we mentioned this already, because so you asked me about it earlier, so I went straight there, is is the computer games. Yeah. As two yeah. escapes. I use that as an escapism. And I tend to use games that, as I mentioned before, Silver Shades, No Hearthstone games, or XCOM, if you're familiar with XCOM. Yep. Which is amazing games. But again, about building something, starting with nothing, and then build something and conquer and overcome obstacles. And and I have tremendous joy in that. The problem with civilization or XCOM is that it can take a mighty long time, right? It can, oof, just one more turn, very famously, right? Just yep. one more turn, and suddenly it's two <laughs> o'clock in the morning. You go, oh, oh I got to get up early. Yep. So again, everything has to be taken with a grain of salt. Everything has to be taken in balance. But it can be a great vehicle of fuel to, to have some fun. Absolutely, and yeah. I'll jump on this one as well. Yeah. I I said RTS games, which yeah. is real time strategy. Yes. Um. So I like the old ones that kind of tap into my nostalgia as well, like yeah. Red Alert or whatever. But Civilization yeah. is a huge one for me, yeah. Yeah. particularly Civilization Five. And my favorite. <laughs> I cannot get into the six. I tried. I tried. I, five is my favorite of all of them. The way I get around it is that that huge time sink, which can t- it can take up to ten hours to yeah. play a game. Yeah. It really is. I set myself the the same scenario every time and try to beat my time. Yes. <laughs> so I've got it down to like two and a half hours. Wow. Um what speed with, are you playing on? I'm playing on I'm playing on the fastest Quick. speed yeah, because yeah. again, six hours is just a bit too much for yeah. me to justify <laughs> spending uh, on a yeah. game. Yeah. But again, it really does tap into uh, the kind of strategy and working systems together yeah. um, as well. And I think civilization does a great job of m- melding law with legend yeah. uh, and really kind of putting this alternative history together, which does again kind of fire up your brain. Like yeah. what if George Washington and Cleopatra had met, what would the two civilizations do with each other? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, find out in my yeah. next game of civilization. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I I play like an hour here or two hours there, just because days are yes. so much stuff to do. Yeah. But um, what I like is then during the next day, I go and think about, hmm, I could do this, I could do that. So you're pre-planning your next strategic move, or you're rethinking something mm. you could do differently. And so the game stays with you, and you can use it escapism during the day, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not to distract from anything else, but just go and think about what will you next time you rejoin your game, what can you do? And you come up with new ideas because you have a fresh perspective. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah. Uh, so what's your, what's your third one? So oh, you also, the second one was also games My, for it's you. It's also games, yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so it's, um, it's, it's a silly thing and, and I don't know how many people are guilty of it. And when you... I buy, sometimes I buy a lottery ticket, right? Mm-hmm. 
And I know I'm not going to win, right? The the Mets. Uh, what odds, if you do? The odds are not in my <laughs> the odds are not in my favor. But if what if I do? Yeah. Say what would I do? And so <laughs> I can spend a lot of creative thinking <laughs> of what I would do if I want this X amount of money. That first week <sighs> yes. after you win the lotto is just the best week, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it is. All these things you're going to do and all the things you're going to take care of and. I, I got to admit in t- when times are tough or when I'm challenged or when I'm down or when I'm facing challenges and, and crises, I, 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 I tend to escape into that. Now, I'm not a gambler. I don't spend yeah. hundreds of dollars. I spend like $10 or $20. The max I've done is $30 on one ticket. So it's not a lot of money. But And I know I'm not going to win, but that $30 allows yep. me to dream, right? <laughs> and it allows me to be creative. What would I do? What's the house going to look like? What's the garden going to look like? Yeah. Where's the pool going to be? You know, what the, what the kind of furniture we're going to have? So that's creative. So I, I escape into that. And it's, it's weird. It's odd. I'm a middle-aged man. I shouldn't be doing this. But it works, man. And I'm... Of course, I get a little bit uh, sad if, when we don't win, but <laughs> ah, last time I won fifty dollars, the time before I won thirty dollars. So, well, yeah, you, you know, you know, you know it, I, I, I got more back than I want, but over a lifetime I've spent, I've certainly spent more than I want. <laughs> Just want to point that out, so it's not exact. But if you can, if you do everything with a grain of salt, do everything in balance, then those twenty dollars I spent, um, it's it's it gives a long way of creativity. Yeah, I want to surprise my wife. How how can now we can finally get that house? We can get that doggy that my uh, that my, <laughs> my daughter wants. You know things like that. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep. Um, my final one is six years ago. I was working a nine to five job yep. where it was getting less and less creative. Yeah. And so I decided to start a podcast. Yep. <laughs> uh, that's what I did. Yep. I was like, I, Here we I'd, are. Be, I'd wanting, I've been wanting to do it for a while. It's kind of been sitting in the back of my mind. Uh, and yeah, it was just kind of like, look, I'm. I need something outside of work that is not theatre because I need to be able to actually produce something without relying on 17 other people. Yeah. And a podcast was what turned into a a small podcast network, which turned into a podcast network, which now turned into my job. So this is something that the, the actual product is not great. I don't, particularly enjoy it anymore <laughs> you don't enjoy making podcasts. no i don't enjoy that podcast anymore oh, okay. um, because it was my first one the sound yeah. is horrible oh yeah um the production is terrible yes uh, but i've learned a lot of lessons and that was yeah it was a creative outlet that did what you want creative outlet productive creation to be and it turned into a a, a, a job it did yeah and and, and you can it's it's so easy to go back and mock the first things you've done, but that was your podcast school, yep. like yeah. drawing school or writing school. You just got to keep doing, it. and the only way to get better at something <laughs> is keep doing it. So, Absolutely, and you learn. You can again sit and theorize about what to do or not to do, but getting your hands dirty, getting your hands down in the mud—that's <laughs> where you learn. Right? Absolutely, I mean, and, and then that's where you got to go for it. The only way to learn is is, is by doing. And yep, so that's why I did it. Like, I'll I'll never regret uh, the podcast. The pod, like, I mean, it was three hundred episodes. Like, it's still up and out there. Which but, which podcast? No, is I'm not going to tell you. Okay. It's terrible. I don't want anyone to listen to it. But it's out there. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, it was a Dungeons and Dragons podcast, oh, so yeah. it was another kind of level of creativity yeah. as well. Because you know, I was creating the game as we were playing, and ah. a little bit of acting and and fun gameplay as well. Okay, got it. Uh, but yeah, it was that the podcast was really kind of the project that that drove both the game and the interaction so that yeah. was yeah that was it for me so you played dungeon dragons i do yes i, I did you, you're saying you're doing and i'm <laughs> saying i did i haven't played in a long time but it's a fun game uh, yeah that and gerps and all those uh, so uh, learn more about you today so there you go <laughs> All right. Well, that is that is our creativity is escapism or escaping yeah. into creativity. Yeah. So um, the question is, you, dear listener, how do you use a creativity escapism? Do you do you escape? And if you escape, where do you go? How do you do, do you- it healthfully as yeah, well? Because yeah. especially now that I'm my own boss, like the temptation is always there to just like, okay, I'm not enjoying this right now. Yeah. I'm going to spend some time doing something I do enjoy, and like, oh, I do need. I need to get it done. Yeah, you need to get it done. <laughs> yeah, and yep. like that. So tell me, what what are your stra- strategies for using it responsibly? Yeah, tell us in uh, in the links. Uh, sorry, the, in the show notes there'll be an, an email. You can, or yep. you can write a review, and uh, the Facebook page is up and coming. So uh, go there as well and write about it. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so thank you for listening. I've been Zane C Weber here with Thomas Mike. <laughs>
And keep being creative, everyone. Please.